I was working on a cantata number 33 as part of a seminar and I went in there to see the actual Bach hand and it just was the most overwhelming thing I've ever felt in my life. I mean, you connect with an individual. It's sort of astonishing. Um, there are lots of private collections, I think, that are wonderful, but um, very few of them are, are built into li uh, university libraries like this. A mariner is a contender of life and a client of the waves and he's got a little exclamation point it looks like. The general situation of the Scheide Library is it is, in fact, the personal property of William H. Scheide, but it's kept in its own special room within the special collections area, the Firestone Library of Princeton. It's more accessible to the world of scholarship and the world of students, probably, than any other private library in the world. As for Bill himself, I mean, he he loves it every time he hears that somebody has actually used, consulted, studied yeah, anything. Well, not a doubt here. I never noticed whether or not... Oh, well, they've um, they got some contraption in his hand. Yeah. They do, but on their robes they have little parts of their okay, names yeah, written. Yeah. So this is, this is almost certainly supposed to be Galileo, but this is Ptolemy. And he takes great delight in showing the books himself. For example, a very rare English Bible from 1631. Well, the Wicked Bible. He loves to spring that on people. Verse 14. Look for 14 and read. It's very short. Thou shalt commit adultery. There it is. It's the <laughs> Holy Scripture. Three generations have contributed to the family library, and it has become one of the finest private collections of rare books and manuscripts in the world. Bill's grandfather, William T. Scheide, started collecting as a young man before the Civil War. Well, he started in Philadelphia, and he thought he would be a, might be a telegraph operator. He was interested, as I would say, in two things that I know about anyway, history and inventions. Bill's grandfather did, in fact, move to the Pittsburgh area in the 1860s to work as a telegraph operator, but soon found himself at the center of northwestern Pennsylvania's burgeoning oil industry. He thrived in the business, became an associate of John D. Rockefeller, and then in 1889, at the relatively young age of 41, retired. One time I met John D. Rockefeller Jr. and uh, I asked if he knew my grandfather, I certainly did. He never understood why he retired. And the answer, I believe, was he wanted to collect books and enjoy reading. William Taylor Scheide bought quite a few rare books, but it was really his son, John Scheide, who succeeded to the library, starting about 1911. Sort of moved the library into very serious, expensive rare book and manuscript. Bill's father concentrated in particular on two areas of collecting. Namely, um, 15th century printing, sometimes called incunabula, which means cradle printing, and also an, Amer an American items. He purchased a Gutenberg Bible, the first major book printed using movable type. Freedom was a primary theme. There's a copy of the first printing of the Declaration of Independence. an early speech of Abraham Lincoln about slavery, written long before his presidency. And the 1733 pamphlet by John Zenger, which helped establish freedom of the press in America. Bill floored me the first time I met him. He said, and what do you do? And I said, well, I do legal you know, defense work for journalists. Do you know John Peter Zenger? I said, yeah. Would you like to see the newspaper that got him thrown in prison? Over the years, Bill Scheide has pursued many interests, both philanthropic and scholarly. But music has been a central passion, something which became obvious even as a small child. One of the places the family used to go is Atlantic City. And on the balcony there was probably a piano, a violin, and cello, entertaining, supposedly entertaining the guests. And I had never heard anything like that. And uh, when they finished, I started yelling. It couldn't, couldn't make me stop, so they took, got me up and started going to the elevator. I kept on yelling, got in the elevator, and yelled some more. 
And they asked me, what, I said, William, why did you yell? I said, because they stopped playing. Bill grew up in Titusville, Pennsylvania, an only child. Like his father, he majored in history at Princeton University, graduating in 1936. Then he headed to Columbia University to study music. I took a uh, Master of Arts degree in music and discovered a, a lot of music of Bach that I didn't know. There were 200 cantatas that were pretty much shall we say, compare a comparative terra incognita, most of them pretty much unknown. So he founded what became the renowned Bach Aria Group to perform the music. For decades, they toured the globe, made recordings, and even had a weekly program on NBC radio. The National Broadcasting Company presents the Bach Aria Group under the direction of William H. Scheider. Now here is William H. Scheider. 1950 is the 200th anniversary of Bach's death, and therefore a most natural and obvious time for giving his music as wide a hearing as possible. It is a year in which all lovers of Bach ought to bestir themselves to the utmost, and the musical public in general should be giving him much more attention than usual. He enlisted some very well-known singers. A tenor was named Jan Pierce, and a soprano named Eileen Farrell, it was a guest appearance in one of the early years was Marian Anderson. The books, of course, were in the f library his father built in Titusville in the early 20s. Bill left the books there after his father died until his mother died because he didn't want to remove anything. And besides that, he was very busy with the Bach Aria group from 1946 on. Uh, he moved to Princeton, and after he got settled in, He'd, and his mother died in 1959. He built the Shady Library on the roof at Firestone. And he brought most of the furniture and the, all the windows, a lot of the bookcases with him. Following his own interests, Bill has added a number of important music manuscripts to the Shady Library, scores by Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, and Schubert. And, as he likes to say, he has continued to fill in the gaps in his father's and grandfather's collection, making big news in 2002. The Christian Bible is said to be the best-selling book ever, but for book collectors, four editions rank ahead of all the rest. The first four Bibles ever printed. Now, as CBS's Mika Brzezinski reports, for the first time in a century and a half, they're on display together. Only three times in history has a private collector had these four rare Bibles in the same room. The first was King George III, the second an ancestor of Princess Diana. And now a set belongs to a relatively unknown American, 88-year-old William Scheide. I would say that Bill Scheide, as a collector, really is a remarkable person. He is a real scholar something he did about early Bible printings in Europe in the 15th century. A beautiful study. In, in his great love, Bach, he has also made real discoveries. 